You've heard about Jason Voorhees. You've heard about Freddy Krueger. Have you heard about Sheriff Hoyt? He can be seen in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2003 and the Texas Chainsaw Massacre The Beginning in 2006. Charlie, or Charles Hewitt, is the leader of the murderous clan known as the Hewitts or Sawyer family. And you and I are well aware of the most famous member, Thomas Hewitt or Bubba Sawyer. Most of us know him as Leatherface. We all know that guy, but Charlie Hoyt is the guy most people don't know. He is the brains behind their killings. When previous Texas Chainsaw Massacre movies would paint the family as backwood hillbillies, in 2003 and in 2006, we get a different backstory, this time involving Charlie Hewitt. One day, Leatherface, who was working as a butcher, gets fired because apparently they are living in this dying Texas town. The boss fires Leatherface and Leatherface murders him. So when word gets out to Sheriff Winston Hoyt that Thomas Hewitt, you know, Leatherface, murdered his boss, Winston Hoyt brings Charlie with him to arrest Leatherface. The sheriff, who is also leaving town himself, feels that bringing Leatherface's uncle will make the apprehension a lot easier. Charlie Hewitt instead shoots Winston Hoyt in the head and then takes his identity. Even changing his own name to Sheriff Hoyt, he then makes a family pact that they won't ever go hungry again. That is when Hoyt harkens back to his days as a POW, when he had to eat his fallen comrades to survive. He teaches the family the way of cannibalism as they start their murderous rampage of violence. Now Charlie Hoyt is not your typical slasher villain. Meaning, he doesn't have a tool or a set of tools to kill you with. His preferred weapon, I would say, is his ability to mimic a police officer and abuse his authority. Now being an authoritarian as well as a psycho, he is able to convince the much stronger, larger, and vicious Leatherface to do the killings for him. But make no mistake about it, Hort is dangerous with or without Leatherface. He fought in wars and survived under the most rugged conditions. Now given the fact that he always carries standard police weapons with him, he is very skilled at shooting his victims. And unlike most slashers who stalk their prey, Sheriff Hort will only do that when he's ready. He's been known to shoot first and ask questions later. Now Hoyt isn't superhuman or overly strong. I mean, he's a wildly middle-aged man, but his super ability is, if I had to be pressed on it, would be manipulation. He can achieve his murderous plans by intimidating his victims and using his military training to break down a person's weakness with ease. And he manages to boss the psychotic Leatherface around almost like an abusive father. Now some people are driven to madness, but Hoyt is driven by several things. He and his family kills to survive. They don't have jobs, they don't have money, but they lure and capture their humans like prey. They butcher, torture, and eat other humans. The most notable moment in Sheriff Hoyt's career was at family dinner. He made a decision that he and his family would do whatever it took to survive and thrive in a dead Texas town. It all started with him killing the sheriff and taking his identity. But as legend has proven, it is Hoyt who introduces cannibalism to his family, as that night they cooked and ate Sheriff Winston Hoyt for dinner. This would be the turning point for the family, as this would be their legacy. A legacy that would go down as one of the most bizarre crimes in the annals of American history. Charlie Hoyt's weakness is in fact that he is a human being. And things that can kill you and I can also kill him. But understand this. As time would pass, the legend of the Hewitt slash Sawyer family has been remembered by the slings of one Thomas Leatherface Hewitt, but make no mistake about it, every single action taken by Leatherface or any member of that murderous clan has been orchestrated by the mind of the true villain of this story. Charles Hewitt, aka Sheriff Hoyt. <laughs>